good morning everybody hope you're having a good week and what we're going to be doing today as you've seen from the thumbnail is a little jumper for our blady girl and here she is now this is the first jumper i made i've made another one as well because i wanted to sort of see how the yarns work because i've mentioned before you can get a double knit and you think oh this feels fine and you get a double knit another double knit and you think well that feels thick so i've had a play with some yarns so i'm going to show you what i did but it's a very basic sort of like little t-shirty jumper really um very simple bit of sewing in but not too much um but it's sort of like all in one basically so apart from the sleeves so i'm hoping you're going to have a go if you do have a go don't forget to sort of link me in one of the instagrams or something like that or send me a message just to show me what you've done and whether it worked for you and also how the yarn differences worked she actually does have a matching hat which i didn't say i was going to do a tutorial um i might consider it but it does take a while so you'd have to be prepared for a long tutorial for that one the jumper takes a little bit of time but it's not too bad so we're going to go top down and make our little blithy her jumper and i hope you're going to join me so here we are with our little Blythe doll jumper. Now I have a selection of jumpers here because I just wanted to sort of have a chat regarding the actual yarn. Now this is the first little jumper. This was the prototype, so to speak, because I've made the hat and I wanted it matching. But the thing is, this is supposed to be a double knit yarn, but it's very, very fine. So I'm like, okay, is that going to work? And it might not be a yarn everyone can get. So I then decided to try it in a double knit, which is this one. And I think it, it's okay but it's a little bit stiff because it's chunkier and it has come out larger. So I decided no to the double knit yarn. So that one went to one side. Now I eventually went for four ply. I love my four ply. I think it's a nice weight for this size doll. It still looks like a chunky jumper, but obviously it's not too heavy. So I did the plain one. This was number three. It takes a while sometimes till I decide I'm happy with a pattern. And it wasn't really until I got to number four, which is partially finished here, I am happy. So I've altered the pattern about four times, even though it's a simple pattern. It still didn't sit right and silly things like that. So I'm going to go with four ply. And this is the four ply that I'm going to use. It is the Stylecraft Special Four Ply. This is a really nice yarn. It's inexpensive. You get 100 uh, grams of yarn in there, which is great. And I'm hoping it's one you can get everywhere. So it, it seems to be in the UK. It's a very common one anyway. So we're going to pop this girl to one side. She's going to be keeping that. That's the jumper I'm keeping for her. So over there. This one I haven't finished because I want to show you how to do the sort of the sleeve and the top of the neck area. So that's going to be our practice jumper. And I'm going to use this pretty pistachio green, which I'm not sure how well. Sun's gone in again now. Uh, how well you can see the colour, but it is a really pretty colour. Now this little model here is it's an AliExpress one, but it's a body that's nearer to the original Blythe compared with the AliExpress Blythe uh, doll that I've got over there who's on like a pure Nemo body so the pure Nemo one slightly chunkier if you're making something fitted can make a difference not such a big deal with this jumper but you do have to be careful the other thing is with these because they have such massive heads I've also have to make it so you can put the jumper on from the bottom which you will see when we get to the end anyway so we don't need that now either we don't need that I have my scissors and a needle there there's a little bit of sewing up but apart from that it's pretty much all in one apart from the sleeves so let's get going so slip knot onto I should have said a three millimeter crochet hook and off we go we're going to do 28 chain one two don't make the chain too tight either three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen nineteen and twenty twenty one twenty two 23 24 25 26 27 28 and one more for a turn because i'm now going to be working along that chain so i'm just going to be doing one double crochet into each of those chain so here we go so that last one was just a turning chain it's not a stitch off we go oh i hate foundation rows or rounds it just feels like it's sort of 
I don't know, makes you sort of stutter to get your work done because it's not as easy as the rest. As soon as you've done it, then you sort of, then you crochet in. Oh, excuse my voice. <clears throat> if it's getting a little bit of cro croakiness, I think I've got a little bit of hay fever coming on. Because, um, yeah, as much as the weather's not great here, there's plenty of blossoms out and flowers and it's all looking very pretty. Um, but, yeah, um, it's I don't get it bad, thankfully, but I do get just that little bit of irritation when it's like that oh it is curling it's annoying when it does that just keep flattening it out if it does i think we're about halfway now nearly halfway so as soon as you get going it works it's quite a quick jump of this uh, i mean whether you want to sort of I think sometimes with the videos, I wouldn't sort of go, oh, look, there's a video, I'm going to crochet that, and you grab your hook, and you get ready to sit down and watch the person do it. I generally think it might be a good idea to sort of have a scan through it first, see if there's anything that's going to be different, see if there's anything perhaps you're not familiar with, or, I don't know, just generally, is it for you? I think sometimes you need to see it before you try it, and then go, right, now I've got my yarn, I've got my hook, I'm sitting down, and I'm going to have a go at making this. Or even write the pattern out first rather than watch me. I know sometimes I've seen things and I just take notes. Um, and then I sit down and sort of have a play myself. We're nearly at the end. Nearly at the end of the dreaded foundation row. As I promptly split, split the last two. One... Oh no, there is still two more. I'm saying last two, that was last four. One more. In we go. And pull it through. All right. So we have a nice little row there, but we now need to join it. So when we're joining it, we need to make sure we've kept it flat to flip it over. Because before now, I've twisted it here and that'll just make it very awkward for the next bit. So we're going to go in into that very first stitch. Which isn't always obvious. I'm actually going to get my needle here because you can't see it. It's there. Can you see how it sort of tucks round? So it is there, but sometimes it's a little bit hard to actually see. So let me make sure that's still flat. Let me get my yarn and give it a wiggle into there, which it is not going to play. Sometimes that happens. You have to really sort of fight. There we are. I'm in. I'm in. Make sure my yarn's. Make sure it's going to be flat when I join it. Yep. And I'm going to do a slip stitch join. There. Now, I'm going to do a double crochet round now. Everything up to a certain point is going to be in the round now. So I'm going to do one chain and then I'm going to do one double crochet into every single double crochet from the previous round. So, as you know, it's a little bit easier to get into now. As me because I probably miss it. I think this is a sweet little jumper that probably anybody could have a go at as long as they've got some basic stitches. I don't think it's hard. If you, obviously if you're a beginner, you might want to take your time a little bit more. And if you do need to slow me down in the video, don't forget there is a feature where you can do that. Unfortunately, it does make the voice go a little bit sort of uh, slow as well. Which saying that I do speak quite fast, I do know. Um, it's, it might not make a difference or just slow it down pop some music on and sort of sit and watch it or stop and pause watching that's a good one if you're not sure what somebody does or if I say do x amount of rounds um, you can just pause it listen to your music do those rounds and then come back to me when I get to the next bit there's lots of different ways the beauty of YouTube for tutorials is great because obviously you cannot sort of do it for everybody everyone's different speeds everybody's different levels so you sort of i sort of have to try and find sort of a, a middle ground there somewhere and hope it's okay for everybody right we're nearly around for this one so that is sort of like the cuff of the jumper in one respect because we're now going to change stitch so let me get in there first and then i want a slip stitch join into that first one there we go and you see it's turned itself inside out as well so Turn it back round. Makes it easier, otherwise you're working on the inside. Now, I'm now going to be doing half trebles. Remember, UK half trebles. Let me just pull my sleeve up. I don't like... 
I'm a bit weird when I'm working. I like to push my sleeves up above my arms so they're not in the way. So a half treble. Easy enough stitch, but first of all, we do two chain. That is the equivalent to our first half treble. Now the half treble, it is yarn round. It is into the stitch. It's pull it out. We have three, just like you would a treble, but instead of like a treble, because it's a half treble, we're going to pull through all three. Okay, and you're going to do that again pull through all three now if you can't actually pull through all three at once don't worry so you've got it there you can go two and a one as long as it's the same strand coming through all three it whichever way works for you i sometimes do that anyway as a stitch it depends on what i'm working on but on average you need to come through all three like that and we're going to go all the way around one half treble into every single double crochet now, because we're working in half trebles, it will start to grow a little bit quicker now. There isn't actually that many rounds to do. I mean, let's bring that little jumper in. That's the little jumper. So I've actually got one, two, three, four. There's actually five rounds. We're on one already. So let's get these five rounds done. And then I need to, I will have to pause while I get my cream yarn which I've forgotten to put on the table because I'm going to do it the same as this pink one. I think that worked quite nicely. It gives it a little bit more character. I mean, you can always add detail as well, don't forget, afterwards. So we're almost round. I've got pen and paper at the side of me as well so I can mark down, although they're quite easy to count, half troubles. It's turning inside out again. Get out that way. I don't know. As soon as it gets past a few rows, it won't do that. Or round, should I say, because we're working in the round now. Now, we've got nearly to the end here. And on a lot of patterns, it would tell you to slip stitch, join. I'm not going to tell you to slip stitch, join. I'm going to tell you to just do a half treble straight into the top of that first two chain. Because I don't want any lines. And if you slip stitch, join, you're going to get lines. Make sure it's nice and tight, though, to join this one. Make sure it pulls together nicely and there we go now again carry on just the half trebles now it does look like there's a bit of a gap at this point but when you get onto the round three it will pull it all together but by doing it this way we get no lines and i think even if you do do lines and you slip stitch join and that it ends up sort of wonky um and yeah i don't think that's a pretty thing i mean if we look at that it's the same all the way around and that's actually where my joins were and that's what you want you ideally want that sort of nice neat uh, sort of finish on it i know it's not always possible there are some things that you do have to do a slip stitch join um but if you can get away with it i will get away with it i do like working in the spiral so this is round number two we're halfway around already look at that i reckon the jumper i mean obviously the video is going to take longer because i've been chattering at the beginning and things like that but i reckon when you've got you know the idea of the gist of it it would take possibly an hour to make a jumper which i think is pretty good and like I said, with this yarn, 100 grams of it, uh, you can make a hat, you could make all sorts of things to match. Uh, little leg warmers, that's one I like to do. Right, we're almost there. Right, so again, this time though, you're not having to go into anything because we already did that join. So it's just carry on. Just carry on round. We're using this tail as my stitch marker. Uh, if you prefer to pop a proper stitch marker in, that's fine. With us only doing five rounds, this should be enough to give us an idea. If you were doing more than five rounds, obviously, then you do have to sort of think about it because the positioning, because it's spiral, does change very slightly. I mean, this is a little short jumper, as you've seen for the doll, but it would look quite sweet. You know, if you did a jumper dress, you could extend it and all you'd have to do is an extra couple of rounds. That's all it's a base as i say it's a basic line jumper you can go with wherever you want you could do a frill edge 
Um, you could do picots around the edge. You could add bows. You could add buttons. You could add all sorts from there. Change your colours, make it stripey. It's just quite easy to do like that. I mean, I think I might make a jumper dress. And I also do want to pop some frills on one of the jumpers to make it a little bit different. Because I'm going to take some of mine um, to the Dolly Gathering Convention. Because I'm having a stall there to sell my bits and bobs. Um, so yeah, I might sort of do a few variations of this jumper. Around again. So that is round three. So you can actually see one, two and three quite easily. Round four. I'm just trying to look in the camera there to see um, whether I'm staying in the middle because I know I'm a bit bad for that. I have actually repositioned the camera. I think I said on one of my other videos, it's above above me now. I've attached the sort of holder to a shelf. I mean, it's not ideal, but I've attached it to a shelf. My camera's hanging off, my phone camera's hanging off there. Um, but at least I'm not, unless I sort of make a really massive movement, I'm not knocking the camera. Whereas before... I'd have a tendency to knock the camera quite a bit. So I'm trying with it. Lots of learning still to do, even after all these years. But yeah, this is sort of working, I hope. <laughs> right, we're nearly round with round four. So we've only got one more round to go. And so then I need to pause and find my cream yarn. I think that cream looks so pretty. Right, I would say that is round four done. We have one more round to go. I mean, the other thing I say about making it longer, you could make it shorter, make it like a little little crop top. That would be a little bit of fun. I'm not sure how these jumpers actually fit for a Cindy doll. I've not tried that. Usually, I think the style of Blythe things are so a little bit more cutesy than they are for most of the fashion dolls. So you can get away with things that are baggy or things that are sort of, you know, really long arms or sort of quite quirky. Um, whereas a lot of the fashion dolls that I doesn't quite work with. In fact, when I get my cream yarn, I will grab a Cindy and then when we're finished, we will have a look. I don't think it's really Barbie's aesthetic. Although, depending on if she wants to go casual, it could be. A pair of jeans or something like that. Or maybe even my curvy. I think that might fit her. Uh, but it'd be more like a crop top. That would look quite cute, actually. We will see. All right, we're almost round anyway. And then we're going to fasten off our green and we're not going to bring it back until we do the sleeves. Although I'm going to move on to pink for you guys after that point. Um, but when I finish this, I would then do some green sleeves and a green edging. So I'm round. So I'm just going to do a slip stitch join. That's it. So all done. Now, ideally, sew your ends in as you go because they will get in the way. I am actually going to pause at a certain point, sew my ends in. I, maybe I don't need to because I've just thought I've got this now. Before, I was thinking I'd have to sew all my ends in. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. So you can see we've got a nice little jumper. That's really cute. It comes out really nice, really smooth. And I'm really pleased with that. So I'm going to lay tools down and I'm going to find my clicker to turn this off a second or pause it. And I'll be back to you in a second. So here is my cream yarn, as if by magic it appears. So I'm now going to be working on this top bit. And these are in rows, not rounds. So I'm going to pick up my work. I have a tendency to leave, you know, where that is. I've got to sew that little bit up there. I have a tendency to leave it at the side. It looks less messy if, you know, if they do you do get any issues. So you keep me a nice smooth side front and back then. Front and back are going to be equal. So I'm just going to pick up anywhere doesn't matter where I am going from the side but you don't have to and I'm going to do one chain and then I'm also going to do a double crochet into that space it just anchors it that's all that is we're still going to be working in half treble so I'm going to do another chain because that double crochet makes it a little bit longer and then we're going to be doing 13 if I get this number right it should be 
um if you've got an extra stitch or something don't worry about it for some reason i ended up with an extra stitch on that one it doesn't really make any difference so now we're going to do 13 half trebles that counts as number one though number two number three number four number five six seven eight nine ten nearly there and eleven twelve and thirteen so I've got 13 across there. Now I've actually been crocheting my sort of the tail end of the yarn in at the same time. You don't have to do that. You can stitch yours in afterwards. Um, I just sometimes find it easier to do that way. So we now need to move on to another row. Now if you look here, we actually only have four. So it's one, two, three, four. So it's just four rows, just four. That's all you're going to be doing. So we have to do two chain because we're going to turn. And then we're going to do another row and I'm going to continue actually crocheting my yarn in per se. Don't need to worry about that. So another row of just one half treble into the top of each half treble. I'll do anything to avoid <laughs> sewing in too much. Um, and by doing this, I mean, I've not just took it on. I've not just crocheted it in on one row. I'm crocheting it on a second row. So it is rock solid. It's going nowhere. But you do need to make sure you don't pull it tight or you don't catch it and things like that. I think the first time I crocheted the yarn in at the same time was purely by accident when I was doing amigurumi. Um, and I thought, oh, that works quite well. And then I realised it's what people did. <laughs> I'm almost at the end now watch for the last one because remember the last one was actually the two chain so it can get missed very easily so there we've got our two rows I can now cut off that original tail that I started it with because it's gone through two rows so that's more than enough to hold it and those scissors are very sharp right so two chain let me double check. In fact, this is something you should check. Oh, how many we got? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. We're okay. Two chain. It's very easy to lose stitches when you're doing rows. And also, have you noticed, I do the two chain, which is our first stitch, but then I'm going directly below as well. Because your stitches are always slightly to one side, so that's one to watch. So it's a good idea to check how many stitches you've got each time you do a row. Make sure you've got your 13 because you don't want it starting to change shape and going into a triangle or something like that. Not unless you deliberately want to do that, which you could. It's a different design altogether, but you could. <laughs> so this is our third row. So we've almost done. So we only need four rows. Obviously at the front, we're going to need four rows at the back as well. So that's that bit done. So you can see. I'm just counting actually what we got there. One, two, three, four. Let me double check that is four. One, two, three, four. That one looked a little bit smaller, didn't it? And I don't know why. I'm just, and the thing is, I did change the pattern of path three times. So I'm just double checking what I did. I think... No, I know what I did do. We are going to do another row. We're going to do a double crochet row, though. I do need to make sure I write these down. So I will pop saying I'm saying I'm going to pop it on the site as a pattern. I do really need to do it. I have a pile of papers at the minute of all the different sort of roughly written out patterns. I'm just doing one double crochet in each one. Um, and oh, I've really got to turn them into patterns for people. People keep asking me. And I'm like, yeah, I'll, I'll get it sorted, get it sorted. And then I get distracted onto something else. But I do have some patterns to go up there. I've got my Midi Blythe hat if it's Dolly. And I will have this one. And I think there's a couple of amigurumis I need to sort out. I will. I need to sit at the computer for a few hours. I think that's the problem. And I'd rather be crocheting than sitting at the computer. <laughs> right. Da -da! So we can fasten that off now. Not needed. And now, if you can see, look, it looks... It's literally sitting nice and flat, isn't it? So what we're going to do now, if you look at the side, 
that's where your last one is. We're going to miss this one. We're missing one stitch only. And we're going to go into the next one. And we're going to do the same process as we've just done on the front or the back. It doesn't really matter because they're equal size. So we pick it up, we do a chain, we double crochet it in, and we do another chain. And then I'm going to do one half treble in each stitch until I've only got one stitch left. So we get a one stitch gap either side where we're going to be doing our sleeves. In theory, we started with 28 stitches. So in theory, I should have 13 here, the same as I got 13 on the other side. So we need to miss one. This is why if you sew your ends in, it makes life easier. Let me just pull that one out of the way. So let's see, let's see. We need to miss one stitch. So that's the stitch I would be missing. So I just need to do one more stitch. And then we're going to count because I actually got a strange feeling I have an extra stitch. But I might not have. So we've got one. Let's get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I think I've not counted my turning one over there. Right. So I'm OK. If you look, if you put your work down flat, if it's equal to your other one, you'll get away with it. So let's go on to our second round. We're saying we've got four rounds of half trebles, one round, well, round, we're on rows, aren't we? Uh, one row of double crochet. So I'm just going to flatten that in. And off we go. Well, off we go if I can get in there. There we are. Come on. Two. It's weird, this cream yarn is actually a little bit harder to see the holes. I think it's very, very fractionally fluffier than the green. Sometimes that can happen with different dye lots, um, different colours. I find some colours just do that. So I can trim that little bit off there after. I should have left a longer tail and then I'd have been able to crochet it all the way along the line. This is row two. Don't forget that last one because it's a, not actually a proper stitch, is it? It's two chain. And off we go again. So we're on number three. Look how quick that went. Again, the more you do it, the quicker you'll get anyway. If you do make the little jumper, uh, if you're on Instagram or even through the um, Facebook page, Octopudding Facebook page, Pop me a little tag, show me what you've been up to. If you've done different colourways, used different yarns, decorated them differently, or you made half a dozen for half a dozen dolls and they're all stood together, that's like quite cool. Um, but yeah, I love to see the work. You know, if people have done something that I've created on here, it is nice. So that's three. So we need one more in half trouble. There is one thing I will ask, though, if you don't mind, especially if you pop it on Instagram. Um, obviously, if you've tagged me, it comes up anyway. But just sort of say that uh, this is where you've seen it. Because it makes a difference for me as well. So I would be grateful if you do do that. So this is our final row of half troubles. Oh, I missed it. Thing is, though, with Instagram, you've got to be careful because I've got my Smart Doll Octopudding, which is really predominantly just Smart Doll, and then I've got my Sarah Scales one. I'll put all the links below. Uh, the Sarah Scales one is the one that I put everything on. So I would have more Blythe, more Cindy, um, picture of a flower. You know, it, it's just a bit random. But um, that's the one mainly. The other one's really just for Smart Doll. Not that I've done anything for my poor Smart Doll for a while. So while I'm doing this, it's actually giving me an idea of something to do for my smart doll. So we will see what's coming soon. I need to start thinking Christmas soon. I don't buy anything else. Right, one more stitch because that's the chainy bit. So we mustn't forget it. And we can fasten off. Ta-da! So if we put the two sides together, they should be equal. I think they are. 
Well, I've had an extra row there. One, two, three, four. No, I haven't. It just looks longer, that's all. One, two, three, four. Yeah, no idea why. But if we lay it flat, it should look sort of quite square. There shouldn't be any bits sticking out. It should be nice and smooth. Now, I'd recommend you sew all your ends in before you move to the next stage. We're going to move to the next stage with the pink one because I've already done one sleeve. And I say, you don't want me to see two, two sleeves. Um, they, They're simple enough. But again... You don't need me to repeat it. You can just sort of double watch it if you're not sure. So we're back with Mr. Pink. What, Mink? Mr. Pink? What am I on about? I'm telling you, I'm half asleep, I think, today. Right. The pink yarn. And here we go. So if you flatten that out, you can see we have this gap here. Okay, so there's the one chain missing there. And we're going to go down this side to this one. And back up this side this should take approximately 15 to 16 stitches depending on your work make sure though if you know done 16 on here write it down because you need to make sure you do 16 on that side because otherwise you're going to have a lopsided jumper so you need to make sure that you do do it equal we're going to get in right at the top there yarn in so i'm going to do what i did for the before for the joining i've done a chain and then i'm going to double crochet back into that space and off we go we need to try and fit in i'm going to go for 16 15 is okay though so i've got one two three four five that was a tight one there but we'll squeeze it in six seven eight nine ten sometimes you might need to fit two in a space eleven twelve thirteen fourteen and oh, there's one very at the top there fifteen so can you see what basically what I've created there? So you just need to try and make it as even as possible. So to actually join it now, I need to turn it over. So I've got my work that way and I need to double crochet into this one here. And that will just join your work by double crocheting it there. Yep, so you can now see you have a little sleeve hole. We're going to do another round of just one double crochet into each one. Just one double crochet that's all you need to do in each stitch now as i say i've done this as a short sleeve you can alter it to make it a longer sleeve if you wish but you might find well depending you could do a flary cuff i suppose um i was going to say you might want to sort of narrow it as you come towards the sort of wrist area but you don't have to so i am round now the next three rounds let me double check i did that one two one two three yep i'm gonna miss one double crochet at the top by missing it it's like decreasing it rather than decreasing two together i'm just gonna miss one so that one there i'm gonna miss and i'm gonna jump into this one and just double crochet around so that's first round doing that It just very slightly slopes the shoulder, which I think just looks a little bit nicer because it is quite a square pattern. And just by giving that little slope, it just gives it a little bit more shape. So I'm round for the first round. I need to miss one there, which I'm going to miss this one here. And then I'm going to go in there and a double crochet round. So this is round number two. It's a little bit fiddly, you have to sort of wiggle it around your finger this, but uh, you can still fit your finger in it so it's not too bad. If you do something very tiny it becomes difficult, but yeah, we can just move this round. We just have to keep shuffling around. Right, we're at the top again. So I'm going to miss this one, miss that one and jump into this one. And this is our final round. 
and hopefully I've done it the same length as the other one. So again, that's something you can play around with with the length. You could leave it sleeveless, just edge it, uh, maybe with two rounds, and it just makes like a little, I um, can't think of the word, just a little pullover that could go over a little blouse or something like that. That would look really cute. All right, when I get to the top, when I've got fully round, which I am now, I'm just going to do a slip stitch finish and that's it. I've done. My sleeves are completed. How easy was that? Again, ideally sew your ends in, get them out of the way so they're not going to get sort of in your way when you're trying to do the other pieces. Now, the next bit, you could leave it like that as a slash neck. That is fine. But I want to work around it because if I take one of the dolls, as you say, it's coming in from the bottom now that's going to be a little bit wide on her shoulder. We'll put it all the way on and then I can show you what I mean. Yep, so that's going to be quite wide. If you wanted an off the shoulder number, that's great. You could just play about with that. But we do need to close this in a little bit. But you still need to make sure we can pull it over the shoulders and over the hips but i think it does need to come in a little bit so by doing that i'm going to be decreasing some stitches either side so we'll see how that goes again you might need to do it differently depending on your doll the first thing we're going to do though is we're going to just pick up a double crochet round so i'm going to start at the front here Or it could be the back, so they're equal, aren't they? <laughs> Whichever way. The piece facing me anyway. And I've picked up right at the edge of the sleeve. And I'm going to do that same pickup thing where I do a double crochet into the stitch. Okay. Now, as I it would have been better if I'd have sewn the ends in because now I'm going to be having a battle. Let's push those through. I want them out of the way completely for this bit. That's better. And then we're going to do a double crochet in every stitch when we get to this far side we are actually going to do our first sort of decrease the decreases we're going to work the same as the uh, sleeves where well, we're just going to miss a stitch so we have sort of try and flatten it out a bit there so you can see it a bit better so I'm going to do one there now there is one the equivalent where that stitch is there so i'm just going to literally jump across into the next cream one and that should bring that in quite a bit tighter and then carry on a double crochet and because we're double crocheting anyway it's tightening it up because it does tighten it up from working on a half treble then into a double crochet Um, so that's one side had its decrease. The other side's got to have it yet. I'm going to flatten it out a bit so I can see it. So with it, me doing the colour change, it makes it a bit easier so I can just jump up. Well, remember, this is where we started with the new colour. So I've just jumped across where the sleeve colour is. Um, just pulled it in so can you see how that's pulled it in quite a bit so now just one double crochet round and then we're finished that is it that is our little jumper we're going to try it on the body of the well the body the headless body there um because the body like i said not much difference between the uh, aliexpress body and the original one not for size anyway obviously there's lots of other differences Now, if you do have trouble and you think it's still a little bit too wide, you could always stitch up these little bits. You don't have to uh, do it with the crochet if you don't want to. Or you could make little straps. I say if it's in a strapless off-the-shoulder number, you can pop some little straps over it. It's just a versatile basic pattern. And we're going to do a slip stitch to finish. Ta -da! We have done. Obviously, we have some ends to sew in there, but I will do that later. But here is our little jumper. 
I think has come out quite cute. I'm quite pleased with that. So let's see how it fits on the way, on the shoulder now. Now these have got rubbery legs as well, so they're a little bit harder like with the Cindy's to actually get up. And there's no bend in the arms, whereas you do get a bend with the AliExpress bodies. Or the Pure Nemo bodies, should I say. Got a thumbs cut on the yarn. Well, I say so ends in, it makes my life much easier. So we push it up. And I think that's okay. It's still a little bit of a slash neck. If you do want to bring it in tighter, you can do. But just remember, you've got to pull it up over the body. So that is our basic little jumper. I'm quite pleased with that. I think it's worked out quite nicely. So I did mention whether it would fit Cindy. Now, here is one of my vintage Cindy's. It's in one of her gorgeous dresses from Cheryl Clayton. So we'll take that off. Now, Cindy does have a slightly larger bust, which it might actually work better on because of that. I say it looks more like a, a chunky jumper, doesn't it, on the on the Blythe. So let's see if I can shovel our Cindy in. Because again, we have rubbery, rubbery, rubbery limbs. She's also got slightly larger hips as well. But we can uh, we can give it a go. In fact, you might even be able to get it over her head. Come on, get your arm in there, missus. Arm is in. Oh, again, I've caught that silly bit I've not sewn in. That's not good. I'm going to have to sort that out now. Um, I'll pull it up onto her shoulders. And, you know, I think that's actually a better fit. <laughs> um, I'm pleased with that. I said I was making these um, for the Blythe, for the Dolly Con. I think I might have to put on the label. They will also fit our Cindy. That's quite sweet. I might have to make her one. So that is it anyway for our sort of video to make. Hope you're going to have a go at making some. So here's some examples, as I say, of items I have made. So it fits all sorts of dolls. So I'll have to take a picture of her as well in the jumper. So I need to find her some trousers, don't I? Um, so thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed my videos, please like, subscribe and share. Please check out my bio. There's various things on there, including my Patreon. And thank you so much for your continued support. And I will see you all very soon. So bye-bye for now.